Praise the Lord. According to one year Bible reading plan D to not six, we have Ecclesiastes chapters four to six. Ecclesiastes chapter four. Then I looked again at all the injustice that goes on in this world. The oppressed were crying and no one would help them. No one would help them because the oppressors had power on their side. I envy those who are dead and gone. They are better off than those who are still alive. But better off than either are those who have never been born, who have never seen the injustice that goes on in this world. I have also learned why people work so hard to succeed. It is because they envy the things the neighbors have. But it is useless. It's like chasing the wind. They say that we would be fools to fold our hands and let ourselves starve to death. Maybe so, but it is better to have only a little with peace of mind than be busy all the time with both hands trying to catch the wind. I have noticed something else in life that is useless. Here is someone who lives alone. He has no son, no brother, yet he is always working, never satisfied with the wealth he has. For whom is he working so hard and denying himself any pleasure? This is useless too and a miserable way to live. Two are better off than one because together they can work more efficiently. If one of them falls down, the other can help him up. But if someone is alone and falls, it's just too bad because there is no one to help him. If it is cold, two can sleep together and stay warm. But how can you keep warm by yourself? Two people can resist an attack that would defeat one person alone. A rope made of three cords is hard to break. Someone may rise from poverty to become king of his country or go from prison to the throne. But if in this old age he is too foolish to take advice, he is not as well off as a young man who is poor but intelligent. I thought about all the people who live in this world, and I realized that somewhere among them there is a young man who will take the king's place. There may be no limit to the number of people a king rules. When he is gone, no one will be grateful for what he has done. It is youthless. It is like chasing the wind. Ecclesiastes chapter 5 Be careful about going to the temple. It is better to go there to learn than to offer sacrifices like a foolish people who don't know right from wrong. Think before you speak and don't make any rash promises to God. He is in heaven and you are on earth, so don't say any more than you have to. The more you worry, the more likely you are to have bad dreams. And the more you talk, the more likely you are to say something foolish. So when you make a promise to God, keep it as quickly as possible. He has no use for a fool. Do what you promise to do. Better not to promise at all than to make a promise and not keep it. Don't let your own words lead you into sin, so that you have to tell God's priest that you didn't mean it. Why make God angry with you? Why let him destroy what you have worked for? No matter how much you dream, how much useless work you do, or how much you talk, you must still stand in awe of God. Don't be surprised when you see that the government oppresses the poor and denies them justice and their rights. Every official is protected by someone higher, and both are protected by still higher officials. Even a king depends on the harvest. If you love money, you will never be satisfied. If you long to be rich, you will never get all you want. It is useless. The richer you are, the more mouths you have to feed. All you gain is the knowledge that you are rich. Workers may or may not have enough to eat, but at least they can get a good night's sleep. The rich, however, have so much that they stay awake worrying. Here is a terrible thing that I've seen in this world. People save up their money for a time when they may need it and then lose it all in some bad deal and end up with nothing left to pass on to their children. We leave this world just as we entered it, with nothing. In spite of all our work, there is nothing we can take with us. It isn't right. We go just as we came. We labor, trying to catch the wind. And what do we get? 
We get to live our lives in darkness and grief, worried, angry and sick. Here is what I have found out. The best thing we can do is eat and drink and enjoy what we have worked for during the short life that God has given us. This is our fate. If God gives us wealth and property and lets us enjoy them, we should be grateful and enjoy what we have worked for. It is a gift from God. Since God has allowed us to be happy, we will not worry too much about how short life is. Ecclesiastes chapter 6 I have noticed that in this world a serious injustice is done. God will give us wealth, honor and property. Yes, everything we want, but then will not let us enjoy it. Some stranger will enjoy it instead. It is useless and it just isn't right. We may have a hundred children and live a long time, but no matter how long we live, if we do not get our share of happiness and do not receive a decent burial, then I say that a baby born dead is better off. It does that baby no good to be born. It disappears in the darkness where it is forgotten. It never sees the light of day or knows what life is like, but at least it has found rest, more so than the man who never enjoys life. Though he may live 2,000 years, after all, both of them are going to the same place. We do all our work just to get something to eat, but we never have enough. How are the wise better off than fools? What good does it do to the poor to know how to face life? It is useless. It is like chasing the wind. It is better to be satisfied with what you have than to be always wanting something else. Everything that happens was already determined long ago and we all know that you cannot argue with someone who is stronger than you. The longer you argue, the more useless it is and we are no better off. How can anyone know what is best for us in this short, useless life of ours, a life that passes like a shadow? How can we know what will happen in the world after we die? May the Lord bless us abundantly. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.